David here with Figboot on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy about having this channel is that I'm given the opportunity to get some hands-on experience with pens that I wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to do so. Uh, many uh, luxury offerings. Uh, I don't have an unlimited pen budget, so I appreciate that there are companies that will provide me with luxury offerings on loan to share with you. And it's one of those luxury offerings I'm going to be sharing with you today. Uh, when it comes to reviews of luxury pens like this, uh, my goal is to provide people who are in the market for pens like this with some information so that they can make an educated buying decision. But I also realize that the vast majority of viewers, including myself, are not in the market to purchase something in this price range. So for those viewers, um, I try to make these reviews as interesting as possible because sometimes it's still fun to see what's out there and uh, better appreciate the luxury side of the market. Uh, it's fun to look at eye candy, even when it's not in your budget. Uh, that being said, the pen I have for you today is from Tasia and is called the Chinkin Tiger. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Tasia for providing this pen on loan for review. Um, and I always appreciate the luxury offerings that I'm able to uh, ink up. Oh, and I also have another pen they sent along to show you during the size comparisons. Uh, it's the Fossils in the Sky Sunset Peacock. Um, I showed a lot of it during the Fossils in the Sky Raid and Shadow review a while back, so you might remember it from there. The pen arrives in this box. Um, this is like one of those nice softwood boxes that I'm really fond of. Now, I'm going to be a little bit careful here. But inside this box, uh, there is a bottle of ink. And then the pen is housed in a little kimono pouch. Uh, this is a very nice pouch. Uh, one of the nicest I've seen. Um, the exterior pattern is nice, but the material here on the inside is a bit thicker on most than most pouches that I've seen. Uh, and the inside is very, very soft. If I own this pen while having it on display would be nice, I'd probably want to keep it well protected inside this pouch. And inside we have the pen. Uh, this is the Tasia Chinkin Tiger. Uh, this is a limited edition North American exclusive. Um, it is a large oversized pen, roughly based on the Sailor King of Pen model. Um, it shares a number of features with the King of Pen. Uh, Tasia has a very close relationship with Sailor. Uh, the most impressive thing about this pen is the amazing artwork. Uh, you can see here, depicted on the pen, is a tiger as well as some bamboo leaves. At least I think those are bamboo leaves. Uh, in Japanese culture, the tiger symbolizes many different things like bravery and good fortune as well as uh, bringing the blessings of rain and peace. Uh, the flying dragon and prowling tiger also represent heaven and earth. Um, I find the chinkin technique used on this pen to be fascinating. Uh, the base of this pen is ebonite, and then it's covered with many layers of Arushi lacquer. Uh, this is where the fun part starts. Now, here's a video of an artisan performing this technique. Uh, obviously, this isn't a fountain pen, but it gives you an idea of what goes into this process. Uh, the artisan goes to work literally etching marks into the Arushi. Uh, this is one of the most unforgiving of Mackie techniques because you can't paint over it to correct mistakes. Uh, you have one shot to get it correct. Uh, once the etching is complete, the markings are filled with Arushi lacquer. Uh, and then a layer of gold leaf is applied, which fills into the etching. Uh, it's a remarkable process. Um, here are some microscope shots of the filled etching. Uh, it's amazing how perfect, even under magnification, the gold leaf filling is. I thought there would be a lot of rough edges, but no, uh, it's very crisp and clean, even under extreme magnification. Uh, it's really beautiful, even up close. Uh, it really makes me appreciate the talent of this artisan even more. Okay, let's take a closer look at the parts of this pen. The top of the cap is rounded. Uh, this is a clipless pen, which I feel is a good decision. I felt that having a clip on here would detract from the overall flow of this artwork. Um, overall, the pen has a traditional cigar shape. 
Uh, the cap angles up and then straightens out about half an inch from the end. Uh, there is no traditional cap band or exterior branding. Again, I feel that's a good decision. Uh, there is a small rounded step down from the cap to the barrel, which begins straight for about an inch before tapering down to the end. And like the top of the cap, it comes to a rounded point. The cap twists off with just under two rotations, and underneath we have this 18 karat gold Sailor King of Pen nib, stamped with the Tasia logo. Uh, this nib is available in either medium or broad. Uh, the Sailor King of Pen nibs are just outstanding. They are some of my favorite nibs in my collection. They're fantastic. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Now, whenever I review a high-end luxury pen with a plastic feed, inevitably there will be comments about how someone wishes that the pen had an ebonite feed and construes that to be a negative thing. Now, while I feel that ebonite feeds have a higher cool factor, um, I'm not an ebonite feed elitist. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm just not thinking that Sailor really does ebonite feeds on any of their modern pens, so I don't have any issue with this one being plastic. Uh, the section begins with a very slight flare. Um, the section angles up slightly until you reach the threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, I really care for the girth of this section. Um, I personally prefer sections that are a little bit thicker like this one, and this one's a great size for me. Um, I also like that the leaf motif is carried over to the section. And even though there are little indentations which make up the images, uh, you don't feel those small crevices at all. They're basically filled in and smoothed out. Um, you don't feel anything different against your hand either with the uh, artwork on the body. It's very smooth. Um, the cap is not designed to post, which is fine. Uh, this is a rather large pen that feels great and substantive in the hand. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It utilizes Sailor proprietary cartridges and a Sailor converter is provided. Uh, the King of Pen housing is rather extended. Um, the converter sits deep in there and there's a little oval ink window, which is nice. Uh, for the King of Pen model, I wish Sailor would manufacture a converter with a larger ink capacity. When it comes to converters for Sailor, it's one size fits all. Um, it would be nice if there was a larger option for their larger pens. Uh, with all of the metal in this housing, eye dropping this pen would not be recommended. Um, as I mentioned up top, this is a limited edition North American exclusive offering. Um, it's currently available through uh, Goulet Pens, Drom Ghouls, the Fountain Pen Hospital, uh, Pen Boutique, as well as the Airline International. Um, you can check out their individual sites for additional details. Uh, this pen retails for just under $3,700. When it comes to luxury offerings, uh, many times I find myself trying to justify or understand the price. Uh, you know, what makes it worth that amount? Uh, with this pen, for me, the value was clearly visible. It's a high quality Arushi lacquer pen with a unique maquillé technique, which requires an extremely talented artisan to complete. Um, you know, sometimes I'll look at a piece of art uh, and think, you know what, even though I'm not that artistic, maybe if I applied myself with enough practice, you know, I could do something like that. Um, I look at what it takes to create this pen, and I am pretty certain that no amount of practice would make me skilled enough to create something like this. Um, it's one of those talents that takes a very special artisan and a large amount of patience and a very precision skill set. So yes, I feel the price is very warranted for this pen, which is also very much a piece of functional art. Um, overall, it is just a stunning piece and one that I really wish that I didn't need to send back to the company. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Tasia Chinkin Tiger. I wanted to give you another look at this, maybe with a little less reflection. I didn't mention in the review, but up top you can see here that there's a little swath of stars in the sky. Uh, and then there's the really nice leaves. Uh, and then there is the tiger. It's just an amazing piece of artwork. I also mentioned I had another pen from Tasia uh, that they had sent before, but then they sent it again. Uh, and this is the Sunset Peacock. 
Um, I showed a lot of this during uh, the uh, Raiden Shadow review, uh, but I didn't necessarily review this one exactly. So they sent this one along. I don't know if they didn't realize that I uh, kind of reviewed it or I kind of showed it, but uh, while I have it in my possession, let me know in the notes below whether or not you saw enough of it or uh, you'd like a full review on this particular model. It's just beautiful with the Raiden work and the gold, uh, and that's what it looks like in comparison to the Chink and Tiger. Here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. You can see that it's just slightly larger overall. Then here it is with a Classic Pen LB5, which again is made by Sailor, uh, that actually is uh, very similar to the King of Pen in size. And then some comparisons to some other pens. This is a Mr. Cypress, and this is an Eggshell 09. Uh, and then we have a Mont Blanc 149. We have a Pelican M1000. And then finally, we have a Pilot Custom Arushi. And then for some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with that Custom Arushi and the Pelican M1000 and the Mont Blanc 149. Here we go with the writing sample for the Tasia. And this is the Chinkin Tiger. This is a very generous broad 18 karat gold nib. And the ink that I'm using is the ink that came with the pen, which is the Tasia Hokusai. Sebe Midori. Now this is a very interesting ink color. You can see here that uh, it's kind of a, a blue-green with a nice kind of uh, reddish sheen to it. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Ferris Wheel Press Misguided Mistletoe. Uh, and then here is another darker green with a sheen to it, the Diamine November Rain. This is what the ink bottle looks like. It's a nice 40 milliliter bottle. What's amazing about this that I found fascinating was when I first opened it up, I knew it was a green ink, but when I look at this, look, that is blue. And I was like, wait a second, did they mess up? Did they uh, put a blue uh, ink in this green bottle? But then check this out. Let's go ahead and just apply some on here. And you can see that when it goes on, it is very blue. But then as it dries, you'll see that it actually turns into a nice green. It's kind of cool to see. Now, that's a rather heavy application, so maybe it won't quite dry during this uh, writing sample. But let's go ahead and show the rest of the writing sample. Um, I mentioned this in the review, but the Sailor King of Pen nibs are some of my absolute favorite. I just think that they are just glorious. Um, they are decently smooth, but then they just have a touch of really, really nice feedback. Um, they are rather flexible. This is a rather broad nib, so you can press it and get some line variation in here. Um, the ink flow is generous on this broad nib. You can see how it kind of was green and then blue. And in regard to some reverse writing, it is a little sharper. I wouldn't say scratchy, but a little bit on the sharper side. And then in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. So the color has kind of changed a little bit on this upper text. Here, that, like I said, that was a rather heavy application, so it's taking a while to dry. But it's going to turn into that green, and it just looks really neat. And so I just thought that that transfer transformation was kind of cool. 
So there we have the Tasia Chinkin Tiger. Uh, I think this is just an amazing piece of functional art. Um, like I said, I really wish that I uh, could keep this as opposed to going back to the company. But if you're interested in a pen in this price range, this is one I would definitely consider. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.